Namaskaram everyone. So recently I went through a really painful wisdom tooth extraction. The thing is I was able to take control of that entire situation and just uh, go through it in a much better way because of the Ayurveda I knew and that's when I realized the massive importance of just knowing a framework of health. See, what a lot of us end up doing is we look at a few videos and we know some nooks as we know. Like, oh, if there's flatulence, you can do something like this. If, if there is this problem, you can do this. But the importance I'm stressing here is a framework of health. So if something random goes awry within your system, you need to have some analysis method. Ki, okay, what has happened? Let me just very quickly identify Uh, it came out of the blue actually because uh, the way the dentist spoke about it and I didn't bother researching much because I trusted this dentist and they had done a few of my fillings earlier and it was a really painless process actually. So when the dentist said that, oh, it's a quick thing, 15 minutes, you just said it'll get done and they did not even brief me on the post care and all that stuff and I... <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm a little naive, but I just thought it was a very, very simple thing. So without any major research, I just went and got one of my wisdom tooths removed. And uh, it was so painful. It was not 15 minutes at all. Like it actually became about 40 minute thing because because uh, they first of all removed it manually. A lot of other dentists, which uh, since then I've consulted, they mentioned that a lot of them just ask the patient to go to the surgeon but anyway this got done manually with those very rudimentary tools like those pakkar type of things oh my gosh so and then when they were removing the tooth it got stuck in the middle so they just had to do more and more because there was a growth like the tooth usually will have like roots you know two roots or three roots this didn't have three roots i don't know what would happen if there was a third root because with this extra little growth, which was kind of making the tooth stuck, it al already took so much time. So if it was three roots, I, I don't know. Like, So I'm assuming this was not the best extraction done. I mean, I don't know. I, um, but um, it was very, very painful. And they just gave me those basic few medicines that we have to take for the next four or five days, which basically is a painkillers. And since then, I've spoken to a few people who also got the wisdom tooth removed and everyone claims it's extremely painful, which then I do not understand why none of the dentists say that up front. <laughs> because it would help us, no? It would help us be a lot more prepared and uh, just ensure that we have all the support needed during the post-care and all that stuff. What happened is after this wisdom tooth removal, first of all, the pain. Uh, the entire vata of my face uh, got completely aggravated and I know this because I've learned Ayurveda. I've uh, studied uh, an online Ayurveda, Ayurveda course and uh, it has been really good in establishing my base. So it was a good online course. So the moment this pain happened, I was so extremely uncomfortable in this region despite taking painkillers and specifically this half. So it is so specific actually. Uh, and then because of that, I was getting some eye issues. Like I already have some dry eyes. So that got aggravated. I got much more dry eyes. And I ear pain every now and then I was getting. So clearly this whole section was a little problematic. Because I know my Ayurvedic framework, I was able to identify that the main culprit right now is Vata imbalance. So the, the most obvious remedy for that is oleation. So right away, I took some ghee and I applied it all over my face, both sides, everywhere I applied, even down here I applied. And one of the problems, see, the natural thing with vata is that it causes dryness. And that was my main thing. Eye dryness increased, pain in the ears and mouth was so dry. Even after drinking water and water, it's so dry and that didn't feel right at all. So the oleation, applying ghee all over the face increased the saliva production in the mouth. It alleviated the dry eyes to some extent. It, it reduced the pain considerably. It was just so much better. The ghee oleation pretty much reduced it by 80%. 80% it reduced. And that is why I realized in those few days how crucial knowing the basics of Ayurveda was because honestly, if I didn't know it, I would not identify vata as a problem. I would not think of oil application. 
what i would have done in that case is i would have gone to the doctor they would not understand what is the problem because the only thing i could say is dryness but i could not put forth how uncomfortable it was and i did tell the dentist about the dryness and she told me to drink a lot of water but that was not cutting it obviously it was the first thing i did to drink water but that was simply not solving i uh, right away did a complete full body abhyanga which is oil application on the complete body because i said this needs much more help i put oil in my hair because um you know and foods i started looking at the foods which will help my vata uh, become normal the other thing i understand because i've learned ayurveda is that even the oil application uh is solving a lot of the problem the fact is that oil application by itself might aggravate the pitta and the kapha of the system because those two other aspects don't like so much of oil application so if i'm doing a little bit over doing the oil application i also need to do a little bit of alle- alleviation for my pitta and kapha so i did few things like aloe vera gel which is cooling for the pitta after the oil bath i had bath with some of the mud because anyway you have to remove the oil and the mud will help the pitta balance out a little so there were these rudimentary home methods that whatever i thought of i did in those few days and that really helped me get control over the situation um and then of course after a few days again the eye eye dryness got aggravated a lot so i realized that uh, just that i was not able to solve it at my end so then i right away so found one uh, uh, kerala ayurvedic uh, kotakal uh, shala was there in ahmedabad i was in ahmedabad that time and uh, i went to that place and got a full course of medicines and a lot of people well, like my friends and relatives were like oh it's amazing that you thought of ayurveda for such a problem because we would never think because this is a dental thing we would never think of ayurveda but i know ayurveda will help because this is vata imbalance definitely it can help the specific dental issues like maybe you know ayurveda doesn't have the exact tools but i have also checked since then ayurveda does um help with dental issues also uh, some of the fillings and all they will get it done from the dentist but a few other things like especially uh, cavity prevention even if small cavities are there then they talk about lot of mouth gargles and all which ayurveda does provide so uh, but the thing is i was able to take control of that entire situation and just uh, go through it in a much better way because of the ayurveda i knew and that's when i realized the massive importance of just knowing a framework of health see what a lot of us end up doing is we look at a few videos and we know some nuksas we know like oh if there's flatulence you can do something like this if if there is this problem you can do this but the importance i'm stressing here is a framework of health so if something random goes awry within your system you need to have some analysis method ki okay what has happened let me just very quickly identify and this i got from that ayurvedic course because a whole bunch of sections are dedicated to diagnosis how do you do the diagnosis in ayurveda and that's how you first of all also know my prakriti i know my vata can get aggravated very easily because i'm dominant vata then there is pitta i have to take care of and there is the kapha element as well second is the diagnosis method like how do you go about it St- start looking at the signs and symptoms quickly and st- you have to also know have the know how of if these signs are there what does it imply so vata aggravation by itself has some very clear signs so in this way we need that framework of health so if it's not necessarily ayurveda for you for whatever reason then go ahead and learn your framework like ayush i'm thinking of ayush right ayush stands for ayurveda yoga yunani siddha and homeopathy so any of these you can learn if there's something else like tibetan medicine chinese medicine whatever it is i would say learn the basics of it nowadays so much is available online i'm sure you can find a good online course and learn the frameworks wisdom to the extraction was kind of like a big jolt i got all of a sudden with regards health physical pain and all that stuff and that's when i really saw the value otherwise for the last 2 3 years since i've learned that course of ayurveda i have been doing so many home remedies and uh, you know rectifying a lot of problems before they crop into a proper illness like normal bloating flatulence is there i can simply very quickly just sort it out a uh, constipation kind of stuff sort it out if there's mild diarrhea i know what might have happened i can quickly start plotting you know okay this looks like pitta aggravated why did pitta get aggravated did i eat some foods like that did i go out in the sun did i do some things which led to pitta aggravation very quickly i'm doing a an analysis diagnosis and i'm get coming to a solution the mom- but anyway i know that if pitta got aggravated and i got diarrhea i, I know the remedies 
So with quick home remedies, I'm able to solve a lot of things out. So it is beneficial in those sense. But when something big happens and wisdom tooth extraction actually is not even that big. Think about other things. Like recently, I'm talking to someone who is a deep meditator, Isha meditator, and they have been going through a very big health problem. They are basically getting chemotherapy and they are only using chemotherapy uh, to kill cancer cells. But for all the side effects of chemotherapy, they are only resorting to holistic means. So apart from wisdom tooth extraction, if any of these big illnesses, which anytime we could contract, our knowledge of holistic medicine will be huge. And what will happen is if you've already learned your framework from before and you've started implementing it in small ways, you'll be way more in a better position if you have to use it in a more serious reason. Like for example, when I have to do oleation or oil application, why did I choose ghee? I knew why I chose ghee because I've used, I've experimented with so many oils by now. So I know that there are two things that suit me. One is coconut oil. I have tried ghee before and I know that it gives very interesting results. There is something much better when I use ghee. And so for this thing, which was most serious for me, I used ghee. It was a very deliberate choice. And next time when I did a full body application, I did coconut oil because that's my normal go-to. If I was doing it for the first time, I might have used sesame oil, which might not have worked very well because sesame oil does not suit me. Sesame oil is warmer in nature. It might have aggravated my pitta more. As I already told you, I was over oil applicating because I really needed it at that time, which meant that I had to be more careful about my pitta, which meant that sesame oil might not have done well. I would really urge you that learn a course, learn some course of medicine or holistic medicine, get the framework, start implementing it in your life. It is going to be so helpful to you. And in general also we need it because I was speaking to one of the IPS officers who was part of the Ayush team at one point of time and he was saying that even from Ayush the push is towards the direction of improving the basic health knowledge um, within the family system. Because see earlier we had all these nani ke nukse and dadi ke nukse types like grandmother remedies. A lot of them are not working anymore. One is also because those remedies used to work in certain conditions. Now our lifestyle and everything is so individualistic. You know, each of us have our own thing going on. What may work for us may be different. Secondly, then you will do a favor, to be honest. Like now that I know some amount of Ayurveda and I have myself used it in such beneficial ways, I can very much give small advices to other people. And I've actually gone and spoken to Ayurveda doctors and kind of shared my knowledge and said, this is how I'm thinking. They have corroborated. They have said, yes, this is correct. From the home remedy level, this is correct. Obviously, if you go to the doctor, they are giving you all those medicines, which are a little bit more advanced thinking, you know, knowing all of the uh, medicinal preps and all is a different level. So always, whenever you need professional, go to professional help. In no way, I'm saying don't go to professional help. But there, there is an immense space where you will need this and it will be a huge boom. And anyway, on a personal note, I would like to share that um, actually because I've been going through this wisdom through the extraction, which uh, for the past three, four weeks, all of my work and these videos I'm creating, all of that went for a toss actually. So ideally by now, I would have liked to have this huge pipeline of videos, which is what I was working on. Uh, none of that has happened. I'm kind of making each video again, like a week on week basis, which is not ideal. But hopefully in the next two, three weeks, I will completely cover this up, you know, have a bank of videos that will also help me put more effort and thought into next videos that I want to create because I already have something in place. And uh, this also came when uh, I was researching into Hari Bhai Mota. So my Hari Bhai Mota video just came out last week. And um, this is all, uh, he went through so much brutal sadhana and uh, so much of physical pain and stuff. So this actually became a really powerful situation for me in a way because I was thinking of that physical pain. And, you know, I closed his website and I went away. I said, I don't want to research more. It is so brutal. But then I went through this whole wisdom to thing and I was going through so much pain and similar time frame Sadhguru got his brain surgery and he went through so much of pain. I came to know that Dada Bhagwan and Niruma, um, you know, I do frequent their ashram as well. Uh, we've got a family place in that ashram. So uh, they actually went through some surgeries at one point of time and they did not take anesthesia. And because their distance from their physical self was so much that they could just go through that deep pain without taking anesthesia which was insane and I just realized I think physical pain has a pretty big role in a sadhaka's life 
it's almost inevitable also, I guess, once we've taken human birth. So even from the perspective of these sadhakas who go on these long pilgrimages and stuff, like, you know, this uh, this Anna, Dr. Madhurananda, who walked from Kashi to Coimbatore, he became very popular on social media and stuff. Any this kind of jatra, if we do, like, what kind of food would we get? How would we manage? Like, we may have to walk in hot sun, like... So at that point also, if we know our prakriti, like, and I can just imagine that my Ayurvedic knowledge would be so helpful. Like if I had to walk through hot sun, I know my pitta will start getting aggravated. I know I need to take the alleviations. The food may be any which type, but at least because I know my prakriti and all, I can adjust within that food that's available and take the best ones and make so much better choices. 